Testing. 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 Testing.
Mother made all holy, throned upon thy knee, evermore the Almighty, child and Lord we see. While with awe thou gazest on the wondrous face, blessed among all women, Mary, full of grace. We bow in homage and adoration to thee, our heavenly mother, queen of the heavens, star of the sea, guardian of humanity. We greet thee and thine angel hosts, shedding beauty and blessing among men and in nature. May we serve thee in our fellow men. O holy lady, mother of the world, queen of love and compassion, with all our hearts we pour out our love and devotion at thy feet, and we offer ourselves as channels of thy wondrous tenderness as agents of thine ever-ready help. We pray thee to use us in thy holy work, that we may grow like thee, our glorious Mother. O Holy Mother, Queen of our hearts, we dedicate our lives to thy service. Ave Maria. Angels and archangels, now around the maid, where the world's creator on her knees is laid. Where she worships o'er him, God and man in one, Son of highest heaven, Mary's royal son. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. May the Lord purify me. May the strength of the Lord repel all evil from this his holy altar and sanctuary and from this house wherein we worship him. And I pray our Heavenly Father to send his holy angel to build for us a spiritual temple through which his strength and blessing may be poured forth upon his people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, let us now lay the foundation of our temple. Christ is our foundation and our chief cornerstone. We are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God, through the Spirit. Except the Lord built the house, their labor is but lost that built it. The foundation of God stand sure, having this seal. Let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Christ is our foundation and our chief cornerstone. O Lord, Thou hast created man to be immortal, and made him to be an image of thine own eternity. Yet often we forget the glory of our heritage, and wander from the path which leads to righteousness. But thou, O Lord, hast made us for thyself, and our hearts are ever restless till they find their rest in thee. Look with the eyes of thy love upon our manifold imperfections, and pardon all our shortcomings, that we may be filled with the brightness of the everlasting light and become the unspotted mirror of thy power and the image of thy goodness, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, blessed, preserve, and sanctify you the Lord in his loving kindness look down upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord absolve you from all your sins and grant you the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With praise and with prayer shall our temple be built. To God alone be the glory. Mayest thou be blessed by him in whose honor thou shalt be burned.
The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the undivided unity, eternal, immortal, invisible, to whom be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the world. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the undivided unity, eternal, immortal, invisible, to whom be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Glory be to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men of good will. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee. For thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord Christ, alone born of the Father, O Lord God, indwelling light, Son of the Father, whose wisdom mightily and sweetly ordereth all things, pour forth thy love. Thou whose strength upholdeth and sustaineth all creation, receive our prayer. Thou whose beauty shineth through the whole universe, unveil thy glory. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the thirteenth Sunday after Trinity, Grant us, O Lord, to hold fast within our hearts thy love, which doth always go before us and follow after us, that so loving thee in all things, we may continually be given to all good works. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who art the strength of them who put their trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. We commend to thy fatherly goodness those who are afflicted by this pandemic in our midst, and we pray thee to strengthen and bless those who minister to them. Through Christ. Amen. We praise thee, O Lord, for the example and assistance given to us by the holy martyr St. Alban, the patron of our church throughout the world. And we pray thee that under his protection thy church may continually serve thee in all good works. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord Christ, who for her wondrous humility and purity hast exalted the Holy Lady Mary among the hosts of heaven, Grant that we, thy people, may so follow that her most noble example, 
that we may at the latter end be found worthy to serve thee, even as do thy holy angels, thou who livest and reignest in glory for evermore. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, with all our hearts we praise thee for the great glory of thy most holy archangel Michael and all thy holy angels. We thank thee for their wonderful wisdom, their supreme strength, their radiant beauty, and as their resistless power is used always and utterly in thy service, so may we, following zealously their resplendent example, devote ourselves wholly to the helping of our brethren. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Teach us, O Lord, to see thy life in all men and in all the peoples of thine earth, and so guide the nations into the understanding of thy laws, that peace and goodwill may reign upon earth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is taken from the fourth chapter of the epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians, beginning at the first verse. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. He that loveth wisdom loveth life, and they that seek her early shall be filled with joy. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law, yea, I shall keep it with my whole heart. The path of the just is as the shining light, shining more and more unto the perfect day. Mayest thou be blessed by him in whose honor thou shalt be burned. Cleanse my heart and my lips, O God, who by the hand of thy seraph didst cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal from thine altar. And in thy loving kindness, so purify me that I may worthily proclaim thy holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that through my heart the love of God may shine forth, and through my lips his power be made manifest. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit.
The Holy Gospel is taken from the seventh chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 16th verse. Glory be to thee, O God. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever beareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. But every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them shall be likened unto a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to our virtual service this morning. Um, I was scheduled to celebrate last week, but uh, last Sunday morning I was not feeling well and had to cancel, so I'm very glad to be back with you all this morning. Uh, I want to thank uh, Father James for being the, uh, the video operator this morning. Thank you. And um, I don't think... I have any other special announcements, so I will continue with uh, the homily that I've prepared. I'm sorry? Okay, yeah. Um, uh, next Sunday, uh, we can all look forward to Bishop uh, William being our celebrant for which service? The, for the Nativity of Our Lady. So... Uh, I certainly hope you will all come back here in a week and uh, join us for that wonderful service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Now, since I wasn't here with you last Sunday, uh, I had prepared a homily for that day, um, and the day's intent for last Sunday was self-dedication. And the intent for today's uh, uh, service is good works. And as I thought about it, it occurred to me that 
one is actually uh, rather a natural progression of the other. We must start with self-dedication to prepare for our ability to do good works. Um, so I've incorporated some of both ideas into what I plan on talking about today. So let's start by talking about self-dedication. How can we be dedicated to ourselves? What must we do to promote self-healing, self-expression, self-motivation, and self-dedication? How can we be entire unto ourselves? Certain people and certain things or situations can bring us back to the center of our being, looking into the eyes of someone we love, experiencing a mountain vista, or sailing over a beautiful ocean, enjoying a piece of music, celebrating a religious experience, and giving ourselves to others are all examples of the ways in which the true identity of ourselves can be brought to light. Too often our world is one of thoughts and conjectures, navigating through external pressures and influences. We're all active and involved people in this complicated world, and it seems impossible to remove these complications from our lives in order to seek a dedication to ourselves and to realize who we truly are. The guiding hand of our guardian angels are forever working to keep us safe from harm, pushing us into the directions of peace, giving us help that we didn't ask for in our most desperate moments. While this is a comforting thought, it doesn't mean we can just lay back and let the angels do all the work. Really, this is more like a partnership. To let the angels help and guide us, we need to be able to hear and to understand what they tell us. To do so, we need to constantly practice keeping our hearts and our minds open. We practice dedication to ourselves through dedication to helping others. We can medicate, meditate, study the Gospels, and go to church. We can also stimulate our intellectual side by reading educational books, going to concerts and art galleries and other uh, uh, works of art, even movies. The motto of the school where I work, Besant Hill School, is Aun Aprendo, which is Spanish for I am still learning. It is inspired by a chalk drawing made by the artist Francesco Goya. It is a drawing of a very ancient old man with a long white beard hobbling along on two canes with the words Aun Aprendo written above him. He is old, but he still has an open mind and there is still much for him to learn. As long as we can keep ourselves open for new ideas and new thoughts, we can keep ourselves open for messages from the holy angels. We can't expect to know where they'll come from. Sometimes you'll see them in passages written in books or poems, spoken over the radio, in the voices of our friends, written in clouds and trees and water, or celebrated in the air. Let them speak to your heart. I believe one of Christ's most important messages and pivotal theme in Christianity is that of love. In Matthew, he says, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? 
And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. His challenge to us then is to practice love to all, unconditionally. The easy part is loving our family and our friends. The hard part is loving and praying for those who hurt us and anger us, even those who just annoy us. We must dedicate ourselves to loving the politicians who we feel are misguided, the extremists who want to hurt us, the people in the huge corporations who we feel are doing harm to others or to the earth, even to the irritating co-workers and acquaintances in our lives. To practice this love is a continuing effort in self-dedication and an integral part of being a Christian. We can also practice self-dedication through faith, faith in God and faith in Christ. Faith in our Holy Mother and the angels. By dedicating ourselves to faith, our hearts and minds are strengthened and our unity with God becomes more complete. Dedicating ourselves to all these things then is quite a tall order and no easy task. We can't just say to ourselves, okay, I'll love my enemies and I'll have faith in God and then go about our business in an ordinary way. No, it requires ceaseless vigilance and constant mental discipline. We must always come back within our own minds to re-remember our self-dedication to love and faith. It is so easy to be led astray when we read something infuriating in the news or when we feel slighted by someone around us. These are the times when it's most important to remember our self-dedication. By this, we'll truly make progress in our spiritual lives and come ever closer to the heart of God. This brings us now to the idea of good works. And if you think about it, much of what I've just said is itself the essence of good works. Actually, I would prefer that the term be used in the singular, good work. For all these things we're trying to do aren't a collection of discrete and unrelated actions. They're actually all a part of a much greater single work, the most important work of all, and the great task that Christ has set us to. That is, to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth, so let us continue this most all-important work and the most vital work of all. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, three persons in one God, be ascribed all honor, might, power, and dominion, now and forevermore. Amen. We will now continue our worship with the act of faith. We believe that God is love and power and truth and light, that perfect justice rules the world, that all his sons shall one day reach his feet, however far they stray. We hold the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man. We know that we do serve him best when best we serve our brother man so shall his blessing rest on us and peace forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit.
We adore thee, O God, who art the source of all life and goodness, and with true and thankful hearts we offer unto thee this token of thine own life-giving gifts bestowed upon us, thou who art the giver of all. According to immemorial custom, we now mix water with this wine, praying thee, O Lord, that we may ever abide in Christ and he in us. We offer unto thee, O Lord, this chalice with joy and gladness. May the worship which we offer ascend before thy divine majesty as a sacrifice, pure and acceptable in thy sight, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thou be blessed by him in whose honor thou shalt be burned. As this incense rises before thee, O Lord, so let our prayer be set forth in thy sight. Let thy holy angels encompass thy people and breathe forth upon them the spirit of thy blessing. May the Lord enkindle within us the fire of his love and the flame of everlasting charity. Brethren, we have built a temple for the distribution of Christ's love. Let us now prepare a channel for its reception, and to that end pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice at thy hands and sanctify our lives in his service. We lay before thee O Lord, these thy creatures of bread and wine, linking them spiritually with ourselves and praying thee to receive through them our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. For here we offer and present unto thee ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a holy and continual sacrifice unto thee. 
May our strength be spent in thy service and our love poured forth upon thy people, thou who livest forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with thrones, dominations, princedoms, virtues, powers, with cherubim and seraphim, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O Lord, these our oblations have served as tokens and channels of our love and devotion towards thee. But now we break the link with us and with all lower things, and we pray thee to purify and to hallow them as earthly channels of thy wondrous power. We desire to offer this holy sacrifice, especially for thy holy Catholic Church, for presiding Archbishop William, and all that are put in authority under him. Uh, for the President of the United States and all that are put in authority under him. For all our bishops, clergy, and faithful, for those here present, and for all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially And for those who are again about to enter this earthly life through the portal of birth, and likewise for their mothers-to-be, especially likewise do we offer it for all those thy children who have been delivered from the burden of the flesh, especially for
that, freed from earthly toil and care, they may enjoy the felicity of thy presence, evermore praising thee in word and deed, O God everlasting, living and true. Wherefore, O Holy Lord, Father Almighty, we pray thee to look down on and accept as a channel these offerings, and with thy Holy Spirit and word to bless, approve, and ratify them that they may become for us the most precious body and blood of thy Son. who, the day before he suffered, took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes lifted up to heaven unto thee, God, his almighty Father, giving thanks to thee, he blessed, brake, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, and eat ye all of this, for this is my body. In like manner, after he had supped, taking also this noble chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to thee, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink ye all of this, for this is my blood. As oft as ye shall do these things, Ye shall do them in remembrance of me. hidden splendor thee, who in thy sacrament dost deign to be. We worship thee beneath this earthly veil, and here thy presence we devoutly hail. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, O come ye, O come ye, to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, monarch of the angels. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet thee. Throne it on thine altar, ever to thee be highest glory given. Word of the Father, splendor everlasting. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Amen. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants, bearing in mind the ineffable sacrifice of thy Son, do offer unto thee this, the most precious gift which thou hast bestowed upon us in token of our love and of the perfect devotion and sacrifice of our minds and hearts to thee. We pray that thou wouldst command thy holy angel to bear our oblation to thine altar on high, there to be offered by him who is the eternal high priest forever offers himself 
as the eternal sacrifice. And we do pray for thy servant to ministers at this altar that meetly celebrating the mysteries of the most holy body and blood of thy Son, he may be filled with thy mighty power and blessing. Likewise, we pray thee to sanctify thy people here present with these thy heavenly gifts, and through these mysteries do thou hallow, quicken, and bless them, that both in their hearts and in their lives they may show forth thy praise and glorify thy holy name. All these things do we ask, O Father, in the name and through the mediation of thy most blessed Son. For we acknowledge and confess with our hearts and lips that by him were all things made, yea, all things, both in heaven and earth. With him, as the indwelling life, do all things exist, and in him, as the transcendent glory, all things live and move and have their being. To whom with thee, O mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be ascribed all honor and glory throughout the ages of ages. Amen. Instructed by the words of sacred scripture and following the tradition of Holy Church from of old, we now say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here do we give unto thee, O Lord, most high praise and heartfelt thanks for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in the Holy Lady Mary, our Heavenly Mother, and in all thy glorious saints from the beginning of the world who have been the choice vessels of thy grace and a shining light unto many generations. And we join with them in worship before thy great white throne, whence flow all love and light and blessing through all the world which thou hast made. O Son of God, who showest thyself this day upon a thousand altars, and yet art one and indivisible. In token of thy great sacrifice, we break this thy body. Praying that by this action, ordained from of old, thy strength, thy peace, thy blessing, which thou dost give us in this holy sacrament, may be spread abroad upon thy world. And as thou, O Lord Christ, wast made known to thy disciples in the breaking of bread, so may thy many children know themselves to be one in thee, even as thou art one with the Father. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and with thy spirit. O thou, who in this adorable sacrament has left us a living memorial and pledge of thy marvelous love for mankind, and thus therein graciously draw us into the wondrous and mystic communion with thee, Grant us so to receive the sacred mysteries of thy body and blood, that our souls may be lifted into the immensity of thy love, 
and that being filled with a high endeavor, we may ever be mindful of thine indwelling presence and breathe forth the fragrance of a holy life. Amen. Ye that desire to partake in the body of the Lord, draw nigh and receive this most holy sacrament. The body of our Lord Christ, keep thee unto life eternal. Under the veil of earthly things, now have we communion with our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Soon with open face shall we behold him, and rejoicing in his glory be made like unto him. Then shall his true disciples be brought by him with exceeding joy before the presence of his Father's glory. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. We who have been refreshed with thy heavenly gifts do pray thee, O Lord, that thy grace may be so grafted inwardly in our hearts that it may continually be made manifest in our lives through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Ite misai est, Deo gratias. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. And may the holy ones whose pupils you aspire to become show you the light you seek, give you the strong aid of their compassion and their wisdom. There is a peace that passeth understanding. It abides in the hearts of those who live in the eternal. There is a power that maketh all things new. It lives and moves in those who know the self as one. May that peace brood over you, that power uplift you, till you stand where the one initiator is invoked, till you see his star shine forth. Amen. Amen. Amen.